Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the licensing subcommittee uh, for the BCP Council via Skype. Uh, first item on this morning's agenda is the election of chairman. Uh, could I have a nomination from the floor, please? Chairman, may I nominate a new councillor flag as chair? Thank you very much, Councillor Dunlop. Uh, can I just check this uh, councillor uh, decent in favour of that? Aye, uh, yes, sir. Now I second that. Thank you very much, councillor decent. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I lost contact there. I'm so sorry to interrupt your meeting. I take it you've started, and I take it you won't need me. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Butt. Uh, thank you for uh, staying on the line. Uh, the other members are with us this morning, so uh, your services are not required. But thank you very much for um, thank you, being Mr. online. Thank you. I'll sign off. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, I'd just like to deal first of all with uh, housekeeping. Please note that the first part of this meeting, up to and including uh, the exclusion of the press and public, of the licensing subcommittee is being recorded by the Council for live broadcasts and will be published on the Council website for a minimum of six months. In order to ensure the meeting is managed effectively, please could everyone present Follow these ground rules for speaking. Only speak when invited to by the chairman. Please state your name before you speak if you have not been introduced by name. Please mute your microphone when you are not talking. After each party has made their representation, the chairman will ask each person in turn if they have any questions or comments. However, if at any point you would like to speak again, please type RTS, that is request to speak, in the instant message conversation panel on the bottom left hand side of your screen. Click the arrow button to send. Please note this panel is visible to all parties. Finally, please ensure background noise is kept to a minimum and mobile phones and other devices are turned off or switched to silent for the duration of the meeting. Thank you. Item two on this morning this morning's agenda. Apologies for absence, and uh, I can confirm that uh, all members are present this morning, so no apologies. Item three: declarations of interest. Uh, do uh, members have any declarations of interest on this morning's in in respect of uh, this morning's agenda? Councillor uh, Dunlop. No, Chairman, not at all. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Deason? No, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, item four, protocol for uh, public rep representation at virtual meetings. Members, in response to the government's guidance, the limited of spread of coronavirus and restrictions around the gathering more than two people, the following items of business will be conducted as virtual hearings in accordance with the government's regulations and Article 16 of the Council's Constitution. This approach has been taken to ensure the Council is compliant with the current restrictions and is not putting participants and members of the public at risk. And the revised protocol for public representation at for formal virtual meetings of the Licensing Subcommittee is included within the, in the agenda for your reference. Item 5. Uh, new premises license application for Bournemouth Electric Club. Uh, this application has been received for a new premises license for the premises known as Bournemouth Electric Club, Broadway Lane, Bournemouth. This matter is brought before the licensing committee for determination. Uh, may I just run through uh, uh, the protocol, please? Um, I will, now, I will now ask each participant to introduce themselves and state their role. I'm Councillor David Flagg. I'm the chairman of this morning's uh, subcommittee. Uh, Councillor Decent, please. Sorry, uh, sorry, Chair, I didn't hear that. Uh, would we 
kind enough to introduce yourself to uh, those present at this morning's meeting, please. Uh, Councillor Norman Decent. And, and Councillor Decent is a member of the subcommittee. Uh, Councillor Dunlop. Hello, I'm Councillor Beverly Dunlop. I'm Ward Councillor for Mordown and a member of this licensing subcommittee. Thank you, Councillor Dunlop. Uh, Mrs Linda Cole, please. Um, yes, good morning. It's Linda Cole, the legal advisor for this subcommittee. Thank you. And Miss Nicola Hooley? Yeah, Nicola Hooley, Democratic Services Officer and Clerk for this meeting. Thank you very much. Now, I do have a, a, a number of uh, people on the list. Um, can I, first of all, uh, call on Tanya Jardim? Good morning, yes. Tanya Jardim, Licensing Officer and dealing with this application. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, Mr. Michael Callahan. Yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm Michael Callahan. I'm uh, representing uh, Bournemouth Electric Club. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ian Crockard. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ian Crockard. I'm the licensing agent for this application. Thank you, Mr. Crockard. Uh, uh, also have representations from Councillor Derek Borthwick. Councillor Borthwick, please. Are you with us, Councillor Borthwick? Ward, uh, Ward Councillor. Thank Council you, Councillor Borthwick, Ward Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Borthwick. Councillor Lisa Northover. Yes, Councillor Lisa Northover. I represent Muscliffe and Stroudson Park. Thank you, Councillor Northover. Uh, do we have Councillor uh, Kieran Wilson with us this morning? I think Kieran has sent his apologies for this. Thank you very much. And finally, uh, I have Mr. John Shopland. Uh, good morning, representing myself as a local resident. Thank you very much, Mr. Shopland. In addition, in the background, we also have Democratic Service Officers um, in assistance. Before I run through the, the procedure, please may I check that all persons have given notice of their intention, intention to speak have been identified. And if there is no comment, I will take this as correct. Thank you. I will now explain the proposed procedure and order of speaking for the hearing as follows. The licensing officer will present the report. The applicant will make their application. Questions of the applicant by all parties, members of the committee uh, to go first. Responsible or authorities and other persons who will make their representations. Questions of the responsible authorities and other persons, members of the subcommittee to go first. All parties will be given an opportunity to sum up with the party who spoke last to go first. The hearing will then conclude. The subcommittee will deliberate in private with the legal officer and clerk present. Notification of the subcommittee's decision will be given within the period of five working days, beginning with the day of the last day on which the hearing was held in accordance with the regulations. The notification of decision will include information about the right of appeal. I will now ask parties to confirm uh, agreement on the proposed procedure or make their representations. So if I have uh, no comments, I will uh, consider that as being accepted to all parties. Thank you very much. Finally, please may I remind all parties speaking not to repeat the information which has already been given in writing, but to expand on their written representations. All questions that are to be asked through the chairman and there will be no cross-examination. I will now ask the licensing officer to pre pre present the report. Uh, Tanya Jadim, please. Thank you, Chairman. The application before you today is to consider whether to grant a premises license uh, at the premises known as Bournemouth Electric Club, situated on Broadway Lane, Bournemouth. The premises currently hold a club premises certificate issued in 2011, which permits regulated entertainment, plays, films, indoor sporting events, live music, performance of a dance and supply of alcohol 
for the benefit of club members and bona fide guests. In addition to the club premises certificate, the applicant has applied for a premises license to permit live music Monday to Sunday, 12 noon to 11 p.m., recorded music and supply of alcohol on and off the premises, Monday to Sunday, 12 noon to 1 a.m., and the provision of late night refreshments, Monday to Sunday, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., for the benefit of members of the public and the community. The licensing office received 37 representations against the application from other persons based on the four licensing objectives, namely the prevention of crime and disorder, the prevention of public nuisance, public safety, and the protection of children from harm. Three representations in support of the application were also received, and since submission of the report, two uh, representations against the application have been withdrawn. Those are from uh, Mr. Bell and Mr. and Mrs. Locke, and um, that's page 51 and 62 of the report, so I ask that these be disregarded, please. Environmental Health Pollution Control and Orsit Police initially objected to the application on the grounds of prevention of public nuisance, prevention of crime and disorder and public safety. However, the applicant agreed conditions with these responsible authorities by way of mediation and the objections were subsequently withdrawn. I note the following mediation with Dorset Police, the provision of supply of alcohol for consumption off the premises has now been removed. Members are asked to consider whether to grant this application and should the licence be granted and the applicants fail to operate in accordance with their licence and any conditions attached to it, they will be aware that any responsible authorities or other persons may request a review of the licence at any time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tanya. Uh, I have a question, first of all, with regards to the point you you make with uh, Dorset Police, uh, saying that the uh, off sales will be removed from the application. But when looking at the application, the application still shows uh, with the off sales being marked. Yes, because that's the copy of the application, as as it as they. Um the initial copy of the application. So since then, changes have been made. OK, so so I have assurances that uh, that will be removed um, on the result of uh, whatever happens at yeah. this morning's hearing. And also, there is a condition. So if you look at the conditions agreed by them, there is actually a condition that has been agreed where off sales will not be permitted. OK, thank you very much. No uh, can I ask members, uh, do you have any questions of the officer, please? Not at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Decent. Councillor Dunlop? Yes, just very briefly, I would just like the officer to confirm that the this is the existing licence holder that is making this application and whether the a designated premises supervisor is the existing one as well. Just yeah. um, thank you. Um, no, so the applicant is um, not the, at the moment. They have a club premises certificate, which is held in the name of the club. It's not on an individual. It's held in the name of the club. Um, this application has been made uh, by Premier Bar and Catering Limited who will be running the premises license, so the bars at the premises. But I think that Mr. Um, Crockard can explain um, in more detail if necessary. So there is a slight difference. And the DPS is um, not Very. currently, because they don't, because of a club certificate, they don't have a DPS as such. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I'll no problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Can I now call upon uh, the applicant, Mr. Michael, Mr. Michael Callahan, uh, to uh, present your application to the, the committee, please, Mr. Callahan? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, just a little bit of background about myself. My name is Michael Callahan. Um, I've owned and operated bars and restaurants in Bournemouth and Poole for uh, over twenty years. I'm currently I am the service provider for Bournemouth Electric, and we also uh, run Bournemouth uh, Sports Club at Chapel Gate, where we have the exclusive concession for bar and catering, 
on site. Uh, during my years as a bar and restaurant owner, I was winner of Pool Safe 2008. Uh, this award was given by um, Pool Council for the venue in the town that proves uh, to be the best operator with regards to health and safety, customer care and customer experience. In 2013, I won a Bournemouth Tourism Award for Best Night Out in Bournemouth with my uh, comedy club at the time. I also do uh, run a number of events. Uh, in 2015, Dorset Chamber of Commerce awarded a uh, uh, best Newcomer for uh, an event which I uh, called Perfect Folk Festival that I was director of. I'm also director of Bournemouth uh, Fireworks that's, hold, uh, that's held at the Little Down Centre, which I've run since it started nearly 25 years ago. And for 15 years, I was director of Grooves on the Green, which is a community event in the heart of uh, Ashley Cross. I mentioned this event because it's very well received by all, although in a densely populated residential area. Um, I think it's important uh, to state why we are applying for this license and what it entails. The reason is to ensure the club is run professionally and accountable. Under the current club license, there are a number of grey areas. My aim was to work closely with the licensing team, environmental health and the police to ensure that local residents and the club can work together. Uh, so you're aware of the differences between the two types of license, I would like to go through the differences. With the club certificate, which we currently have, no personal license holder is required to authorise the sale of alcohol. There's no mandatory training of anyone. With the new premises license, at the very least, one member of staff have to have training. That would be designated premises supervisor. As a matter of course, all my staff receive in-house training. With the club certificate, a committee is responsible for the supply of alcohol. They need no training, no individual is responsible. With the premises license, one individual is responsible as a sale takes place, and that is a designated premises supervisor who has to have a personal license. With the club certificate, there is no need or no, uh, no need for a, des a designated premises supervisor. Uh, obviously, under the premises license, there has to be a designated premises supervisor. With the club certificate, Police have no power of closure. Premises are not subject to potential magistrate court orders to close all licensed premises in the area uh, where disorder is happening or are expected to happen. The premises are not subject to power of police closure on grounds of disorder and noise uh, nuisance. Under a premises license, the police do have the power to close the premises as, st as stated. With the club certificate, police officers may only enter a private members club by invitation, other than a police officer uh, pursuing a felon who they believe to either either hide in the club or has been seen entering the club. Under a premises license, the Licensing Act empowers the police or other authorised persons to enter the premises with a view to seeing whether a licensed, licensable activity has been or is to be carried on under it uh, and in, in accordance with the licence. The definition of the author, authorised person includes police officers, licensed officers, environmental health officers, fire inspectors and health and safety officers. With the current license, the club opening times are 24 hours, seven days a week. With the new license opera, uh, application, we are looking at 12 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. Under the current license, the supply of alcohol is seven days a week from eight o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the morning. Under the new application, we are looking at 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. Under the current license, the live music, uh, live music is allowed Friday and Saturday, 8 a.m. in the morning till 12 at night, and the rest of the week from 8 a.m. in the morning until 11 o'clock. Under the new license, we are applying for 12 p.m. to 2300 hours. Under the current license, recording music is Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. in the morning to 23.30, and on Sunday, 8 in the morning to 2300 hours. Under the new license, we're applying for 12 p.m. until 1 a.m. With the current license uh, that we uh, hold, which is the club certificate, excluding the mandatory uh, conditions, there are 10 conditions on the license. Under the new licensing conditions, excluding the mandatory conditions, 
we have offered 28 in the application. 16 have been added by the environmental health officer and 10 added by the police. In conclusion, my aim is to run the club in a professional and accountable manner that is sympathetic to the needs of the residents and local community, whilst maintaining a viable business model. Since applying for the license, it has been my pleasure to meet with a number of residents who originally had objected to the license. As a result of these meetings, we have already introduced a number of practices and agreed to implement a number more. These are uh, a one metre barrier has been installed between the fence of the residents of Castle Lane and activities taking place in the field in order to protect their fence and to stop balls being kicked into their gardens. We've moved the goals uh, that were against one of the fence lines to stop beans, balls being kicked uh, towards resident gardens. We're looking at installing sensor lights along the pathway towards the bowls club to discourage antisocial behaviour when the club is shut. And we're introducing a, a number of signs stating no alcohol on site and CCTV in operation. I emailed or hand delivered a letter to every person on the list, inviting them to meet me to discuss their concerns and see if there was anything I could do for them. Although I met with every resident who replied, unfortunately, for one reason or another, this offer was not taken up by every on the list. However, the offer still remains that I am more than happy to meet with any resident or representative after this hearing. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Callahan. Before I move uh, to uh, uh, questions, um, can I just uh, double check? I've, I've missed uh, three RTSs in the, um, in the conversation bar. Can I just double check? Uh, Nikki, did, did you wish to speak at all? Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to advise group that Councillor Kelsey is in the meeting this morning, uh, but is here just to observe and is not participating in the meeting. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor Dunlop? I've spoken. That was my question to um, the officer. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor, Councillor Dun Dunlop. And finally, uh, Linda Cole. Linda? Yes, um, it's fine. I think it's now been covered. My, my question was going to be to the licensing officer, really to give some background detail of, um, for you as um, a committee, the difference between the premises license and the um, club certificate. But um, I think that's been done now with um, Mr Callaghan as well. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, in which case, can I now move on to questions? Do members have any questions for Mr Callaghan at all? Councillor Dunlop. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to establish, first of all, uh, Mr Callaghan, congratulations on um, all your awards and um, thank you for bringing your experience um, to, the, to the committee this morning. It was simply who has been um, managing the club up to now on the club certificate. Um, you have or haven't been involved in it to date. Or are you coming in as someone new and fresh? Um, new and fresh, thank you. I'm uh, a little bit old for that, I'm afraid. But yeah, uh, the I would say um, that, uh, that currently the license, the members' license, the club license is run by the committee. Um, as such, under the new license, we would um, I would be one of the license holders, but we'd also have a designated premises supervisor who is a license holder as well, and his name is Mark Berry. Maybe um, I'm, I'm directing the question to the wrong. Does the, does the club certificate remain in existence, and the committee still run the club for club activities? Uh, I'm not sure who I'm asking that to, actually, mm. Chairman. I just want to establish: Will we have the certificate still running and the premises license concurrent, or, or will it be superseded? Um, Linda, are you able to help us out on that one? I, well, unless um, unless the um, club certificate is, is given up, um, it, it will be there. So, for, for example, should the application um, be refused today, there still will be a club certificate. Um, the premises license is a more powerful tool, as Mr Callaghan explained. So, 
um, even if one, even if both were still in existence, um, then it would be the premises license that the licensing team, environmental health, etc., the police would um, would deal with. But while I'm while I am speaking, Mr. Callahan, did I read in the papers that you took over the premises in autumn? I, I read something about autumn 2019. Was I am I right in that? Maybe you could clarify what. Uh, yeah, we were invited in to come in as um, uh, to, to oversee, but obviously, as license, the license was still under the um, under the club, uh, and the license was still held by the club. We came in as service providers, really, to look at the, the overall running of the club. So, so when we say autumn nineteen, what, what do we mean? Like September, October time last year? Yes, yeah, I think it was. Um, I think it was the uh, July, I believe, when we came in. Okay. So before July last year, you you had you and your team, whoever you may be, you never had any involvement. No, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Linda. Shani, did you want to to add anything to that at all? No, I think it's been covered. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, any any further questions for Mr. Callahan? Uh, um, me, Chairman, please. Can I just ask? Um, if you would um, give up this certificate if your application is approved today, the club certificate, will that be given up should this application be approved today? Mr Callahan? Um, I, I, I am happy to. Uh, I'm, I believe, though, uh, Linda probably advised me more, that obviously it's in the name of the, of the Electric Club Committee, so would it be their responsibility to... to it's in the application, uh, the license. Yes, it, it would. Yeah. The the license couldn't be, you know, Mr. Callahan can indicate um, that he he would be happy to, but it's not his license to give up. But the usual thing would be, um, we we would expect that the the club would um, do that. I mean, it, it becomes useless to them because, as I said, that there is a more powerful tool. Yeah, there is. A the reason I'm asking, Chairman, is that we have uh, had had 37 letters of objection, less the three that have been withdrawn. And Mr Callaghan has obviously done a, a great job speaking to residents to assure them or reassure them of why we are, uh, why this application is being made. Um, uh, but a lot has been mentioned about activity outside the club, antisocial behaviour, drunks, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to go into detail. Clearly, this is prior to Mr Callaghan coming in and taking over uh, or putting in um, uh, this, this licence. And I just want to, what I'm trying to do is establish, I guess, a clear division that the responsibility with all the things that have happened in the past obviously don't lie with Mr Callaghan and that we are uh, we can separate the two as we go forward and I think residents just perhaps would need to be assured of that clear division. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Dunlop, that's uh, a point very well made. Uh, I have a request to, um, from Mr John Shopland. Mr Shopland, you have a question for Mr Callaghan. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, actually, a couple of questions. Um, first of all, uh, regarding the the um, designated area for um, uh, outside drinking that's been a, a part of the Michigan Environmental Health Officer, um, can he confirm the size of that and the actual location of that? Um, does it come up to the residence fences on Diamond Place or not? And how far do the seats go into the car park? Also, um, regarding the times he mentioned on his club premises certificate. At the moment, the certificate I have in front of me, uh, which I believe is the valid one provided by the council the other week, um, states that live room recorded music doesn't actually start or permit until 7 p.m. in the evening, not at 8 a.m. as he suggested, um, and also at the weekends as well. And the question regarding Councillor Devley Dunlop just made, um, uh, we have actually contacted the police um, since um, the current Sim Callahan has been in charge of the club about activity outside our house, smashed bottles, broken glasses, a fight where someone was dragged along the road by a car. And also in February this year, 
the council or the, the club previously made agreements with the environmental health officer regarding uh, music and activities in, I believe it's the Butler Suite, but they wouldn't be conducted. In February this year, on the 22nd of February, they had a party outside there uh, with loud noise going on until gone 11 o'clock in the more in the evening, sorry, uh, where people were outside the club, outside the area, which they said they would not be and agreed with the council not to be drinking or making loud music with the windows were open as well, even though they'd been agreed to be closed. So I just wanted to add that to what uh, Councillor Dunlop just mentioned. Thank you, Mr. Shopland. Um, I think uh, the answer to your question there may have to come from Mr. Callan Callahan and uh, the licensing officer in terms of uh, the area. Uh, can I ask Mr. Callahan to respond first of all, please? Yes, certainly. Uh, the licensed area um, and the application is for the whole site uh, to be licensed. Uh, the good thing from our perspective is that the, there is to be no alcohol to be brought onto that site, we can then officially confiscate any alcohol on site and remove it from anybody if it's not uh, uh, dispensed by ourselves. Um, there are conditions on there um, that we've worked with environmental health that um, there is that obviously no drinking on the field, but just to a designated area, which is um, a seating area outside of the butler suite, uh, which is the smoking area as well, uh, that will only be allowed until 11 o'clock out there. Apologies, I can't remember what the second one was. Um, with regard, I'll go on to the third uh, one, which is the Butler Suite. Um, as far as I'm aware, these were recommendations with Environmental Health. Since I've spoke with them, we have come to an arrangement where we have a sound limiter um, in, in that room that we uh, then set the levels uh, with Environmental Health so it doesn't have any impact uh, from any events that are going on in, in that room. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Uh, Tani, is, was there anything else you, you can add to uh, the questions from Mr Shopland that will help members? Um, not particularly. There were complaints, as Mr Shopland did uh, mention previously, and they were dealt with by uh, the um, Environmental Health Officer and uh, a licensing officer who visited and um, discussed all the concerns and the premises. So there was one in um, at the end of... 2019, August 2019, but that was relating to a temporary event notice, and they discussed um, what options there were. That's when it all this all started. They discussed what discussed what options the um, premises had in order to um, become um, so that the environmental health and licensing can enforce any issues that they had at that time. And the noise complaints uh, with regards to the Butler Suite. Uh, there was um, a complaint and the environmental health, um, envel environmental health officer discussed it with the premises um, and because of that they agreed that they would no longer hold DJ or band events in the Butler suite. That's the only extra information I really have to add. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, I have a request to speak from uh, Councillor Decent. Councillor Decent, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, on the 37 representations um, are with respect to your premises, uh, Mr. Callahan, um, the properties, residential properties, are quite in proximity to your club. Um, and I'm just wondering why the uh, 37 people haven't come forward, or a few have come forward, to lodge their complaints to you. Mr. Callahan. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think I think the, one of the big problems, or one of the things that has come uh, out of this uh, application, is the lack of communication in the past. Um, I think that has been a little bit of a, a problem uh, previously. Um, in the past, uh, it has the, the any complaints have gone through the committee. The committee are not on site at all times, so this has sometimes taken quite a while to get through any response if indeed anything has happened. Uh, one of the conditions we have agreed to uh, and, and, and desire is communication. Um, the great thing that I've had the chance to do is to meet a, a number of the residents, and, um, and through communication, I think that is the way forward with this. We've, set, we've agreed to set up a hub. Um, how we do that, a bit of advice on, but where we do communicate 
Um, one thing that we've said at the moment, at the moment, if people have rung the club up, the club, it, it just goes to answer phone or is not answered. Uh, currently, if you ring the club, it's diverted to my phone. Um, and if it's not, if I'm not on site, then it's diverted to the uh, duty manager's phone. Uh, similarly, I've offered my email address to every resident uh, there on, who uh, objected. So if they have any issues at all, they can get in touch with me directly. Um, I think communication is, is key on these things going forward. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Uh, did you have any further questions, Councillor Deason? Yes, if I may, for all. I've, I've noticed that there is a pub, the Broadway pub, uh, in close proximity to, to, to your club, uh, Broadway pub, I should say. Could you tell me if you had any problems at all from the pub? Um, being a members club, we we don't allow members in unless they're signed uh, non-members in unless they're signed in by um, uh, by, by guests. Anyway, one of the conditions we we spoke to the police about um, was that we would have last entry uh, at twelve o'clock, um, so we wouldn't have anybody coming into the club from outside uh, the areas. That includes uh, um, obviously from other neighbouring um, establishments. So uh, that's that's one of the things we looked at so we could um, stop people coming over to to, uh, to our premises after 12 o'clock. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Uh, I have a request to speak from uh, Linda. Linda, please. Thank you. Um, I just just going back to um, I think it was Mr. Shopland's question. I think the other question was something about um, 7 a.m. Start on the club premises certificates. So I'm just really going to ask Tanya to um, see if she could assist me. I'm, I'm looking at the club premises certificate now, and I've, I may be confused with the the, um, the question, but I I can't see anything that says seven o'clock, seven a.m. Can you help me on that, all, Tanya? Please. I'm just having a... it's on page forty-one of the papers, the certificate. But there are lots of papers out there in this pack. <laughs> says noon. Yeah, so I'd agree with you, Councillor Dunlop. Um, live music, Monday to Sunday, 1,200 hours to 0, 0,100 hours. Yeah, but, but I did hear right. There was a mention, wasn't there, about 7 o'clock? I think Mr Callahan said, was it 7 or 8 till, or was that just uh, other activities? But no, it does state here that it's from 12 noon, although it goes on an hour later indoors. Yeah, so I'm there is a slight good. reduction of an hour for the live music and recorded music. It, it, 12 well, members, I made the note of 7 p.m. as well. I, th I think this is what Mr. Chaplin said in his question, that he was looking at a, a certificate. He, he, he was looking at some document that had different times to what was being said. So I just, it was more for his benefit, just to clarify. I'm not sh quite sure what he's looking at. Um, Mr. Shopland, would you be kind enough just to... Um, um, yes, so, so the, um, I, was, I was provided with a, a club premises certificate by the council. I'm, I'm, I'm presuming it's the one that's still valid. It's uh, certificate number Bravo Hotel 083627. Uh, in response to Mr. Callahan's uh, representation, he mentioned that they're authorised to have music from 8 a.m., um, and I was just pointing out that on the certificate premise certificate I have in front of me, if that's the, the valid one, it's got uh, live music from Monday to Saturday from 7 p.m. until midnight, Sunday from 7 p.m. until 10.30, live recorded music Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. until 23.30, and Saturday 4 p.m. until 23.30, uh, Sundays from 12 until 22.30. So I just want to make sure if, if that was the current certificate that um, I was provided with by the council, if that one was valid or it's been superseded. Thank, thank you, Mr. Shopland. Uh, the certificate that is within the uh, agenda bundle this morning is uh, certificate number BH117993. 
Can you just confirm, Tanya, that this is this is the latest certificate? Yes, that's correct. That's the certificate that we have on our records as the last one being issued. But if Mr. Shopland could just confirm the number that he had, I could have a quick look because I don't I don't recall that number anywhere. I'm afraid. Yeah, it's um, BH zero eight three six two seven issued in two thousand and eleven. Thank you, Mr. Shopland. Thank I think you. I'm just having a very quick look. I think at this point we'll move on, and perhaps Tanya could come back and just confirm uh, uh, via the uh, conversation panel if, if, if that's uh, possible, Tanya. That's fine, Can Chairman. I, Thank you. Thank you. Can I now move on to uh, Mr. Crockard, please? Um, I don't have a lot to say on this. I just wanted to clarify the live music thing. I think the certificate that Mr. Shopland has is, is the correct certificate. But the 2012 and I think 2015 Live Music Act uh, deregulated uh, live music for, for audiences of under 500 people. So from 8 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night, it's not licensable. Um, so it would have superseded the conditions on the license. Which is where the issue is, where, where Mr. Shopland is, is reading. Well, Mr. Shopland is reading is correct, but the 2012 and 2015 Music Act superseded it, so that you don't need a license up until 11 o'clock at night unless it's more than 500 people. So that may well clarify it a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Crockard. Uh, is there anything else you wish to? Um bring to the attention of the uh, committee this morning in, in No, I think Mr. Sorry, Mr. Cam I think Mr. Callahan's covered it really it is um, I, 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 everything he said is exactly as we as we've done and what we perceive it to be. I think it gives enforcement an awful lot more um, powers within the, the, the license and also um, I think it's important that even if, even if the club license wasn't surrendered, which I, I think it probably will be, but if it wasn't it would be superseded by the premises license. The, the, the police, everybody would have the power to go in, and it would be. It, it, it wouldn't really take any effect at all. The club license. Thank you, Mr. Crockard. Uh, Councillor Dunlop, please. Yes, I'm sorry, Chairman. I hadn't actually finished my questions, but but never mind. Uh, Mr. Crockard has, in fact, just covered an important point as well that uh, the residents should know that this gives them a lot more ability and recourse for complaints. But the question I wanted to ask was actually about the designated uh, premises supervisor. I'd like to know what experience um, Mr. Berry has. What's his background, please? Hi, Councillor Dunlop. Uh, yes, Mr. Berry, uh, I've known him for many years, but he's been um, a premises uh, uh, license holder for many years. He's on um, venues as well, but he's been working for me for the last three years. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Whereabouts? What's, what's his specific experience? Um, he was working for me. He was, uh, he's been at Chapel Gate. Uh, he also worked uh, down on a small uh, bench that we did down at uh, the fire station, uh, down at um, with, with the university. Um, prior to that, he had his own establishment um, in uh, called the Winchester in um, in the Triangle, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Any further questions, Councillor Dunlop? Not at the moment, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Dunlop, please feel free at any time. Right, if there are no further questions uh, for the applicant, I would now like to move on to uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Derek Borthwick. Uh, Councillor Borthwick, would you be kind enough to address the committee, please? Yes, um, I I'd like the opportunity after this to ask some questions on what's been raised so far before I actually uh, uh, present the uh, the residents um, uh, how they feel about it all. But I'd like to know how many people are licensed to be on this um, premises at a time, and how many cars are allowed in the car park. 
Mr. Sir, Mr. Callagher, and obviously the question is to Mr. Callagher. You with me? Hello. Uh, thank you, Councillor Borthwick. I just want to uh, double check with uh, the license, licensing officer whether or not uh, the numbers are restricted uh, via uh, building regulations, etc. Um, Tanya, can you confirm at all, please? Hello, Chair. Um, no, I don't have any restriction on numbers. I don't have any record of that anywhere. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Callahan, please. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, with regards to numbers, it would depend on, on the activity that was uh, taking place on the premises. For example, if we're doing a wedding on there, with, which has a number of tables in there, then we would restrict the number of people allowed into the premises. Um, similarly, if it was an uh, open floor, then it would be different, uh, different numbers that we would allow in there. Well, I think with regard to car parking spaces, I believe we have 90 90 odd car parking spaces there. Uh, if, uh, thank you, Mr. Callan. If I may, um, I'm not so, so sure that uh, the premises uh, would be limited to numbers in, in case of um, fire. Um, I just want to double check on that. Um, I, I'm fairly certain that. Uh, you would have done a, a fire risk assessment in in uh, in, confirm, in confirmation of the fire uh, regulatory, regulatory reform act, uh, which would show how many people you could have on those premises as a maximum who could safely escape in the, in the case of an emergency. Um, uh, I think we might have to uh, see if we can uh, find uh, further information on that. Uh, Mr. Councillor Borthwick, did you have any further questions? Councillor Borthwick? Uh, Are you still there? Uh, I'm with it, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Kanner, um, are these generators on site all the time, or are they just only for particular uh, engagements? Can you hear me? Can you hear uh, me? Thank you, Councillor I think we missed the first part of your question with regard to um, electrical generators. Yeah, are they on site permanently? Are they Mr. always Callahan? on site? Um, okay. um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Borthwick, uh, we, we, we don't have generators. Took over as service provider, there was an event that was booked in through a third party. Uh, that did bring on generators onto the site. Um, it was. It was. I actually uh, asked them to go through a full, uh, complete a full event management plan for the for the site, and I advised them to keep any generators uh, away from the fence line. Since then, I am not taking any third parties to bring events onto the site. And since I've uh, since I've been there, I've been, um, installed a 32 amp supply that will feed any event infrastructure that we have on there. So we do not require generators. And if any generators needed to be uh, put on site, then they will be um, in, in accordance with uh, environmental health guidelines. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. In, in regards to your um, uh, statement, you, rec uh, you talk about um, uh, uh, ex um, excessive noise will be controlled. Well, according to my residents, that's not happening. But um, you talk about introducing a hub. I can't understand why you haven't introduced that hub over the last seven months since you've been there uh, helping to run the club. Um, why haven't you done that? Why haven't you introduced this hub, which is obviously the easiest way to communicate with all the residents, not just a few. Uh, why haven't you done that? Why haven't you introduced this hub? Uh, Mr. Um, Callahan, I'm just going to interject there for a minute and okay. ask uh, the licensing officer if, if they can assist members with uh, regards to uh, the item that Councillor Borthwick has brought up, please. Tanya? Sorry, could you just confirm it's the hub that Councillor um, Borthwick, Borthwick wants, to, wants confirmation of how to set up the hub? That's yeah. correct. Okay, that is something that we may be able to discuss. Um, with Mr. Callaghan, but normally what it tends to be is having a, like Mr. Callaghan has com 
um, confirmed earlier, is having a telephone number, a form of contact where members, uh, where um, residents can contact the premises direct. Um, if you if you can have we can add that into the license as, as a condition, but that's I'm not too sure how they want to um, agree on that. Uh, thank you, Tanya. Um, Mr. Callahan, would you like to comment on that at all? The introduction of the hub. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, obviously, I can't be answerable for what's happened uh, before I came on board. But since I met with a lot of the residents, one of the things that they did say was that it, they, they found it was, it was a little bit pointless because they tried and tried to get in touch with people um, in the past through the telephone number uh, or through um, email in the committee and had, had probably very little response. And I'm not judging what's happened, gone on before. I'm only judging what's gone on uh, uh, since, since I've been on board. Everybody that has emailed or rung me, um, I have responded to on that and everybody that I've met with I've, I've, I've given them my email address in fact the letter that I took out to everybody uh, that I either hand posted or emailed to has my email address on so um, I, unfortunately what has happened before was off my watch and what is going forward is, is up to me um, and I, I give my assurance that that is what I'm looking at doing is to keep in touch with these people uh, Thank you Mr Callaghan so just for the record um, should this license be uh, granted today, you will set up a hub for local residents so that they can contact you at any time uh, if they have any uh, questions or queries regarding the running of the premises. 100 percent. The, the only way this club will work is if there's a, a relationship between the local residents, the community and, and, and the premises. It's, it's the only way that it, that it will work. Thank you, Mr Callaghan. Uh, Councillor Borthwick, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, fine. Um, Thank you. How, how is one security officer going to control a large number of people using the club and the sports field? Because uh, your, off, your um, officers who are looking after the um, behaviour on site, have, you've only got you're saying you've got one person or more than one trained person with to control the behaviour of the club. Mr Callahan? Um, the, the person that is responsible for the return of alcohol is a designated premises supervisor. He's not a security um, officer. He does actually hold his own personal uh, SIA licence. Uh, but um, we we do monitor that. We do, as part of the assessment with the police, when we spoke to them, any events uh, that are taking place outside on the field, they have asked us to give um, an event management plan to them eight weeks in advance. And during that, and, and in that uh, event management plan, there is a, a risk assessment where I have to assess whether or not I believe we need additional security at an event. And one of the things that it's asked us to, for us to risk assess is anything to do with football uh, and specific sports events uh, on that. Uh, I use, um, obviously, in my events, I have a, uh, a close relationship with the security company that I use. Um, and one of them is a personal friend of mine that we can draw upon people if need be. Uh, but that would all be in my risk assessments, as, as I would do at, um, at the Little Down Fireworks. Um, and that would obviously have to be okayed by the police and by, uh, by the police, really. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Uh, just for reference, Councillor Borthwick, that is one of the conditions uh, brought forward by the Environmental uh, Health when, when I, on the Agenda. When, sorry, when may I present the uh, residence case now? Uh, yes, please, uh, Councillor Borthwick. I'll do it now, yeah? Okay. My residents have asked me to represent them at this licensing board today. I wish to give the board the residents' objections in which there are 39, with only three not, uh, uh, who, are not, uh, who are supporting the application. Having been the ward councillor for 11 years, I am fully concerned with the very poor record of mismanagement of this club. Today, we have heard all the applicant's promises for the future and the fact that his company has made real improvements to the management of the club. 
since taking over. 39 residents do not agree, and there are, to, and there are many more who do, wish, do not wish to get involved. The company states they are managing the club now and claim they have been for the last 10 months. The residents have submitted many emails and there have been no real improvements on the management of the club. And they are concerned about the increased number of hours which would en enhance the problem. Why have the club not carried out these pro proposed improvements during the months they have been in contact with residents? A promised hub uh, has not been done over the last seven months. Muscliffe is a quiet local residential area where families enjoy a quiet residential life. The club over many years has brought many complaints from re local residents about the constant mismanagement of the club on the sports field and, in, and the building was built in 1954, was not built to contain the modern levels of sound and vibration. The site also has a covenant by SSSE to secure the grounds and the, sport, and the club as a sports club. There are three other established businesses within a hundred yards of the club, including a pub, all selling alcohol. This application is more suitable for a nightclub in the center of a town. What, what improvements for extra drinking does this bring to the lives of the residential area and the, and the residents of Muscliffe? The club has many more members from outside Muscliffe. This late night drinking will entice more late drinkers to be late for late drinking place in Bournemouth and will be become known for it. The entrance into the club is a single lane ro small roadway where all traffic Part, both ways must give way. The housing is to the immediate side to the small roadway. The car park is in constant use, loud engines and, and, and voices. Especially at night, cars travel at unnecessary high speeds and braking. You can't drive away at late at night without making a noise. Why is not the CCT been fitted? The site is too small to avoid noise and people speaking late at night in an open space. Noise from the club cannot be contained within the club 100%. Somebody has to open a door or a window at some time. Private parties and visitors will not be aware of the noise levels, as already admitted this morning, that things have been carried on about Mr Callaghan wasn't there. Broken bottles are left on site, urinating on other people's property, removal of recording music sound levels from the site, prevention disorder. When I come on to the actual licensing, there are reasons for representations. For the prevention of crime and disorder. The current licensing arrangement for this premises regularly result in localised antisocial behaviour, Violent behaviour and the litter in the surrounding locality. The local residents can give multiple examples. There are no security staff at present and no apparent attempt to control the entry or enforce the rules around the premises, such as noise, antisocial behaviour, the application for a new longer licence no longer operates, and a late night takeaway food which is an actual variation on the current, will only serve to in further increase the impact of the crime and disorder by encouraging more individuals to the premises at the more unsociable hours. Longer operators may always encourage greater levels of intoxication and further increase of disorder. Prevention of nuisance, public nuisance. The premises is located within a densely populated residential area. The current license often result in, in nuisances noise from music and within the premises and loud and offensive. Conversation from this smoking area are until midnight. The current soundproofing is insufficient. With no security staff present, the outside noise will be, go unchecked. 
that the closing noise is generated by regular uh, vehicle movements and, to and bins being emptied often in the early hours. Some patrons of the premises have a little respect for the residents at closing time in, with excess noise being generated and, and even urinating during, uh, observed in the street. The new licensing will allow longer and operating hours with added nuisance of fast food uh, alters with higher footfall will be generated, increased outdoor seating will add noise to the already uh, penetrated area in a very small smoking plan. Public safety. The current operation at this site have no provisions to assist public safety. No person security is present to control the number of customers using uh, and controlling behaviour. Rules do not appear to be enforced. Glass and glass bottles are regularly seen or heard smashing outside the smoking area. When the party is in a function occurred at the premises, hundreds of additional customers can be present, including minors. No additional measures to keep these customers safe and apparent. The new license will now operate hours outside facilities, including take away food. There is no provision for keeping customers or residents with this additional term. Protection of children of, from harm. Children are often present at these premises, including up to closing time, especially when a function or party is held. The, child, the, ch the children are often unsupervised and allowed to roam around outside the areas, including the park, car park uh, area. This is contrary to the current license regulations as door supervisors are not provided even when a disco is being provided. The loon license will extend hours of operation protecting facing these children in increased harm. Um, that, and of course, uh, you are aware of the local um, where somebody's had his arm broken and uh, the police are taking action during the Christmas. So um, it's still going on, this all this bad behaviour. So, uh, Councillor Borthwick, can I, that's it. That's it. Can, I, can I ask if that's uh, the end of your presentation to yes, the members? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Members, do we have any questions for Councillor Borthwick, please? No, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Decent. Councillor Dunlop? No, thank you, Chairman. No, can I open it up to the floor? Is there any questions that uh, members, uh, that those present at the meeting this morning would like to ask uh, Councillor Borthwick at all? Okay, in which case then, uh, I would now like to move on to uh, Councillor Lisa Northover. Councillor Northover, if you would be kind enough to address the committee, please. And can I ask that you uh, be concise in your presentation and please uh, not to repeat anything that may have already been presented to the committee in writing. Councillor North. Chairman, um, so when this, um, when the notices first went on um, the lamppost about this application, there was a huge amount of uh, worry and interest from um, members of the local. Um, community because they had had a long history of uh, noise, late night um, antisocial behaviour, um, noise from people and from recorded music and coming and going um, antisocial behaviour particularly in the field. So um, I'm very grateful to those, um, all of those who have come forward and written out exactly what their issues are, those 39 residents. Um, but um, Matthew Taylor, the environmental health officer, um, ha I am very confident that he has really, really understood exactly um, what the issues from the residents are. And he has very carefully listened to e each and every one of those issues and looked at what conditions he could put in place to mitigate against them. And I think that he um, has covered re really well each of those. So I feel very confident not only that he's understood the issues for residents, but that he's used all the powers that he has to to make sure that um, we're doing everything we can. So uh, I think one issue was that people may, uh, when they saw the uh, one o'clock um, 
uh, closing time, they were concerned that this appeared to them to be an extension of the um, hours. But actually looking back at the um, previous license, the current license, it's actually reducing um, the licensable hours. So it's not probably quite as concerning as some of those residents thought when they saw that. Um, I think really the residents just want to be able to have a good night's sleep, enjoy their gardens in the summer, and not um, hear, uh, not hear this um, antisocial behavior. And I think although um, the residents have um, seen the conditions, they still are nervous and I can see why they would be still very nervous um, and I think I hope that um, Mr Callahan um, I think I have spoken to him and he the field is a really big issue and this isn't really covered by the license but I think the club really needs to make sure that the field is really well managed because I think that um, causes a lot of upset for the residents. So um, I think these conditions now give the residents a, way, a huge number of ways that they can bring this license back to your committee if there's any problems, and they didn't have this before. So uh, on the whole, I think it's um, a positive move forward, and um, and yeah, I, su I support the um, new license. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Northover. Are there any questions for Councillor Northover at all? No, in which case then I'll move on to uh, the last person I have on the list to speak, and that is Mr Shopland. Mr Shopland? Hi, hello again. Um, just, I did actually uh, request to speak after that last uh, uh, comment, but... Um, sorry, no, Mr. Shop sorry, Mr. Shoplin, did you have a question? Yeah, that was, yeah, I did actually. Um, she, she, Lisa stated that um, it's actually a re reduction in the hours of the license. It, it is in regard to the sale of alcohol, but it's actually an extension of the live and recorded music, which is now currently um, the license I have, the updated one, thank you, Tanya, um, has it up until midnight. So that is actually an extension and not a reduction in the hours of the current license that they have for live music and recorded music. Um, our objection was basically, it's, it's quite lengthy, and I, I presume you've all read it, so as you said, I won't, I won't go into detail and, and cover the areas again. Um, but uh, again, my question would be um, a restriction or a condition by the environmental health um, says uh, after 2100 hours, drinking shall be limited to the area designated outside the butler suite and that was my question earlier to Mr Callahan is what is the designated area for drinking outside the butler suite until 2300 hours because um, currently um, the car park is um, outside the houses is more than half filled by um, outdoor seating that goes outside the built-in seating area outside the butler suite so I just wanted to clarify what size that is seating or area was outside the butler suite. Um, I, I, again, it's, our objections are, it's seven days a week. He, he's, he's asking for, that the club is going from you know, drinking and music in the current license until seven days a week until one o'clock in the morning. That potentially gives the residents absolutely no respite from music for seven days a week or from clubs. Um, drinking, etc., as they're leaving the club. Some of us have to leave work at three o'clock in the morning, so I'm potentially going into work after being disturbed until one o'clock in the morning. As I mentioned previously in my representation, had we known that when we moved in, we possibly wouldn't have moved in here. Um, there is also a question. Has it gone to? I can't even find it. But, yeah, basically, other than everything I've already said in my representation, our biggest concern is the extension of the hours until 1 o'clock in the morning, seven days a week, versus um, what it is right now until 22, 22.30, uh, Monday to Friday. We think for its location, the restriction that it currently has for recorded music um, is is quite excessive because that, that's not on there um, until midnight. But 
if you have that until one o'clock in the morning for seven days a week, that is quite, quite long. I'm, I'm repeating myself here. I'm trying to muck between just bits of paper. Um, and Mr. Callahan, yes, he did write to everybody, but in his letter, he did state, it is not our intention to go, going forward to operate until these hours. So if it's not his intention to operate until those hours, um, why is he applying or why is a club applying for the extension? Um, until those hours. It does have a detrimental effect out on our health. Um, we can't sleep at night with our windows open. Even, even this week, when he was open this weekend, um, this weekend, uh, apparently according to the website, the, the club said that they would be closing at 9 p.m. Um, there were people, still people outside in the club next to our garden at 11.15 drinking. Um, and then they left the club shortly after that. But it was still loud. We ended up having to close our windows on a rather warm night because we, we couldn't sleep because we were right outside our bedroom windows talking. Now, we're talking literally 17 metres away from our windows. We're having people um, congregating in the evening, loud, obnoxious um, vocabularies being used, and it is very disturbing. We have young children in the house, and they have to sleep with their windows closed. And even my, my son goes, oh, great, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight because they have a club, they have an event at the club, or there's people in the club making noise. So that's the impact that it's having on the local residents, and I'm concerned that that is not being fully taken into account um, with a one o'clock extension for the music. Thank you, Mr. And Shopkin. Uh, I have been uh, reminded that uh, the application in front of uh, members this morning is for live music that is up until 2300 hours. Uh, can can um, Officers, just confirm that for me, please. Tanya? Yes, that's correct. So the application for live music is up until 2300, so it's from 12 noon till 2300 hours. Thank you very much. And one question. Uh, Mr Shopland mentioned about the designated area for drinking outside of the, um, the club premises. There is nothing uh, on the application drawing so uh, is, th is that something that uh, you are aware of Tanya or is it something that uh, the members can consider uh, when they retire to come to their decision? Um, yes I, I've just tried to look at the, the plan as well and um, I can't clearly see although there are uh, parts there where it mentions seating but I, I can't see it clearly either so perhaps Mr Callaghan can confirm or you can consider her when you retreat, but uh, maybe Mr. Callaghan can confirm where it will be if he can see it on the plan, so I, particularly, I can't see it myself. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, yes, um, do you want to respond? Sorry. Mr. Callaghan, are you able to um, advise the committee in, 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 uh, in respect to the information that the, the members have in front of them? We have a plan, which was the application uh, at Appendix 2, which shows the licensed area in red of the whole uh, area, uh, but members aren't aware of exactly where the designated drinking area will be after the 2100 hours uh, cut-off point. Are you able yes, to assist? Yes. Yes, I can. Sorry. Uh, just on that, um, the designated area, I, I spoke with Matthew uh, about that, and that would be the, um, there's a, a, a railed area, uh, like a little patio area, and in front of the butler suite. It's on the actual pathway, not in the, um, in the, in, in the car park bit. Uh, just to go, the reason why we've got um, uh, some seating in the car park area at the moment is because um, because of the COVID uh, situation, we have and we we applied for a temporary events notice as well, just for this to cover as well for, for the opening weekend, but to allow more drinking outside. Uh, but obviously that that will um, that will be negated once we have the license if we were given the license. Apologies. Um, uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Callahan. Uh, right, um, are there any questions for Mr. Shopland at all? Chairman, may uh, I just you, say a Dunlop. word? Of course. Um, it really wasn't a, a question for Mr Shopland. I understand the concerns that he has raised, and I think he's raised some very valid points. Um, but um, I think 
what he might what he should be assured by is in fact that some of those issues that have happened we uh, there hasn't been we haven't really had a lot of control over those and that this application does give us greater control um and it, it depending on how we uh, proceed when we deliberate this, if we, for example, are minded not to grant this application, the existing certificate with all those problems that Mr. Shopland has described are in place and that this application should actually give him some comfort that we would have greater control. That was all, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Dunlop. Uh, a point is well made. Uh, I have a request to speak from uh, Mrs. Linda Cole. Linda? Yeah, I'm just trying to um, pin down where the outdoor area is. So um, I think it's actually part of Mr. Shopland's um, rep, but maybe if we look at page 109, there's a picture of a, of a white fence. And he's named it in, in his um, rep, the designated outdoor seating area. And I just wonder if Mr. Callahan can confirm, is that the area that we're talking about? If you, if you can find the page 109, there's some photographs. Uh, I haven't got that in front of me, but I can confirm it is the area that's on the pathway um, in front of the Butler Suite, and it's just at the end of the Butler Suite there, but it is demarked by a picket fence, a white picket fence. Yes, that, that's what I'm looking at. So that, yeah. so that, that is where people, the designated area for people to drink outside. Uh, the, the drinking and smoking area. Yeah, okay. So generally, that. Did, uh, any further information, please, Linda? Sorry to cut you short. Um, no, no, I haven't got any particular um, specific questions. I, I was just um, wondering if it might be helpful, though, if Mr. Callahan could maybe give us a, 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 just a little bit of a flavour of the type of events that um, may um, go on. I know he has put some in his application form, and how many events? Um, there will be that maybe using an outdoor area or, or just sort of um, sometimes we call it school nights, but it, it's really, you know, what, what's he sort of intending or what, or what um, you know, will be going on, on you know, your Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sort of Thursday nights. Um, I assume often parties and bookings may, may be at the weekend, but it's just to get a flavour really of um, the type of business that, that goes on and the, the amount of bookings that there may be. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Mr. Callan, are you able to uh, advise yes, the members, yes, please? Yes, yes, I can. Uh, thank you. Um, with regards to uh, uh, predominantly um, the parties that we we have are really sort of like 30s, 40s, 50s weddings and uh, and celebrations, and they generally are when, um, Sunday, uh, Friday and Saturdays. Um, with with regard to activities during the week, uh, we we have a number of restrictions in that we can't do many things because we, we have commitments to the, the residents. So on Monday, Tuesday, we have our Skittles nights in there, uh, which aren't that raucous, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but they, they tend to finish about 10 o'clock, and there's limits to what we can do in there. On Wednesdays, once a month, we um, we, we host uh, the Swing Unlimited uh, Jazz jazz Club um, on, on the on the Wednesdays, and uh, that's, that's, that's basically what, what we're doing at the moment. With regards to outside activities, I have submitted um, a proposal to, um, to the police uh, with their conditions, but the idea is to look at more family fun days, like a Sunday fun day, uh, in keeping with events that, um, that have gone, uh, that have happened there previously. As I said, any events that go on outside would be under, under my management, uh, so I do have, um, obviously, experience in that, that area. Uh, and I am I can be sympathetic to the needs and uh, requirements of the local community, uh, so that is what uh, we're looking at there. Um, th th there is there is talk, and I will have to discuss it with uh, residents of um, of a possible firework display. Um, obviously, I have expertise in in putting on a uh, community firework events. Uh, that is something that I would like to chat about because it has been there uh, in the past historically. Uh, the club used to hold them. I've spoken already with people to see whether or not it was viable, uh, with Payne's Fireworks, who are based in Salisbury, who do our fireworks a little down. And it's those sort of events that we could do. But all events outside of the field, as part of the conditions that we worked out with Environment and Health, would finish at 9 o'clock. Thank you very much, Mr. Callahan. And obviously subject to the event management plan as well. It gets 
assessed and checked by the police, yeah. Obviously, yeah, and that, that would be available to anybody that needed to read it or wanted to read it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, right, my intention now is to uh, for uh, representations um, to be summed up. Uh, I will start with uh, Mr Shopland, and can I ask all those uh, who have made representations this morning, please don't repeat uh, yourself, but if there's anything that you may have forgotten in your representation that may help the, the members uh, come to a decision, uh, we would be grateful. So, Mr. Shopland, please. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, sum up as, as what I've already said in my representation and just now. Uh, and again, it's just the, the one o'clock um, of the, the music is what we're it is our primarily objecting to from the midnight until you know, one o'clock seven days a week. That's our main concern, um, live music and recorded music, and ensuring that it doesn't happen in the butler suite. Okay, thank you, Mr Shopland. Um, Councillor Northover, did you wish to add anything? Oh. Oh. Uh, yes, yes, please. I, I just um, want to make the point, which I, I hope is correct, that if, um, if there's noise waking people up in the evening coming from the club that's it's not allowed anyway you know it, whether or not they're allowed to carry on the music till whatever time it shouldn't be um heard inside people's houses disturbing them and causing them not to um be able to get a good night's sleep so if if, if that can be confirmed that, that is the case and i hope that the um, conditions including the limiter and the areas of the club to be used um, should mean that what the, the res local residents shouldn't really be aware of what time the um, music finishes because it, they shouldn't be hearing it in the first place. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Northover. I, I believe you are correct in terms of uh, public noise nuisance. Uh, Councillor Borthwick, is there anything else you wish to uh, bring to the committee's attention at all? Yes, particularly the fire situation where we are working with unknown numbers being admitted to the building uh, and the field. And I don't think you, know, you can run a licence if you don't even know how many people are, going to, are, are allowed to attend. And I would remind the um, committee that there are, including the club itself, there are four re uh, businesses selling alcohol within 100 yards of each other. Thank you. Thank Jim. you very much, Councillor Borthwick. Uh, Mr. Crockard, is there anything else you wish to uh, add to the representation this morning? Yes, please. Um, just to consolidate what Michael said, that um, we, we do licences all over the country, and I have uh, very rarely seen a suite of conditions um, that, that have been laid on a licence. This, this will give so much enforcement powers and it's, it's a risk for to, to go for this license to be honest because the enforcement will be complete at the moment um, police would have to make an appointment to go and see the committee no one's responsible for the alcohol no individual and no training no mandatory training at all so anyone could go in there and be in charge of selling the alcohol okay. this way enforcement exists and i think I, th I think it will work out well for the residents let alone michael thank you very much uh, Mr. Callahan, anything else you wish to to add? Uh, nothing really. I mean, uh, apart from the fact that um, we talked about the hub, um, as I say it wasn't something I was aware of when I started there, but it was something that um, I was keen to put in place. Um, obviously, communication has been difficult, but this uh, this application process has allowed me to get in touch and, and contact people who do have issues, uh, and I want that to continue. The club's been in existence for 85 years, and I want it to continue for another 85. But with in in consultation and working with the local residents, the local community. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. And finally, if I could just go to uh, Tanya, is there anything else you wish to add, Tanya, at all in respect of the application before us this morning? Nothing else. Nothing else, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, I will now conclude the hearing. At the end of this meeting, the subcommittee will adjourn in private with the legal adviser and the clerk to deliberate. Notification of the subcommittee's decision will be provided within the period of five working days, beginning with the day or the last day on which the hearing was held. The notification of decision will include information about the right of appeal as appropriate. 
And can I now ask the legal advisor just to advise with regards to uh, appeal process? Mrs Cole. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, there is a right of appeal to whatever decision is um, made um, today, um, which the Chair has just advised will be communicated to you um, within five days. Um, that right of appeal is to be made to Dorset Magistrates Court within 21 days of that notification of today's decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, that ends uh, this part of this morning's meeting. And could I ask uh, Mr Jones if you'd be kind enough to um, halt the uh, recording, please?
Members, the next item on uh, this morning's agenda, item six, exclusion of press and public. In relation to the items of business appearing below, the committee is asked to consider the following resolution. That, under section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting for the following items of business on the grounds that they involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 1 and 2 in part 1 of Schedule 12A of the Act, and that the public interest in withholding the information outweighs such interest in disclosing the information. Are members happy that we move forward? Yes, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dunlop. Councillor Deason? Yes, Chairman. Thank you very much. Can I now ask uh, Mr Jones to uh, stop the um, uh, live streaming, please?